cooking. No, not Hot Pockets, Warcraft cooking. Not just for min maxes, but also a brilliant way of making a stack of gold. Welcome to the channel, my name is Chazit, and this is Cooking for Gold. A simple, no-nonsense overview of the various ways of making gold with cooking in the Burning Crusade classic. Before we do anything, we need to look at levelling the skill. Fortunately, to make all the good gold making recipes, we only need 350 skill level. Now for those of you that level cooking in classic, you'll be pleased to hear that leveling it in the Burning Crusade is far easier. Simply purchase the Master Cookbook from Gaston in Honor Hold if you're on the Alliance, or Baxter in Thralmar if you're Horde, which allows you to skill up to level 375. To go from level 300 to 325, you need to pick up the Ravager Dog recipe from Sid Limbardi inside the Inner Honor Hold if you're Alliance, or from Cookie One Eye in Thralmar for the Horde. This recipe is a valuable buff food which although not the best, will still get some good use throughout the expansion. The meat required to cook this recipe is dropped from Ravagers found in the southwestern part of Hellfire Peninsula. This makes it extremely convenient if you want to skill up your cooking alongside your levelling. To get to 350 skill you have two options. Firstly, if you're levelling fishing or have done so already, you can go for golden fish sticks which are the meta food for healers throughout the expansion. The recipe to make these is purchased from Innkeeper Biribi in the Illyrian Stronghold if you're Alliance and Rungor in the Stonebreaker Hold if you're Horde. Golden fish sticks are made from golden darters which are found inside schools throughout the rivers of Terracar or fish with a lower drop chance from any open water in Terracar Forest and Zangamarsh. The other option to level if you don't want to go fishing is the Warp Burger which uses warp flesh from warp stalkers all over the centre of Terracar Forest. This food is used by agility classes in raiding so you'll make some money from selling these straight away. The Warp Burger recipe is sold by Supply Officer Mills in Illyrian Stronghold for the Alliance and Innkeeper Grilka in Stonebreaker Hold for the Horde. Once you're level 350, we can start to make some real money. Now I mentioned fishing earlier but I wanted to bring it up once more. Fishing goes hand in hand with cooking the Burning Crusade, so I really would recommend taking the time to level it up. The fish you can catch along the way will also make you gold, so it's well worth doing. I have a full guide on how to get the most out of fishing in the expansion, including leveling it and which fish are the best to go after to make a ton of gold. The link will be in the description and the pinned comments, so please do feel free to check that out. Now, moving on to the gold making part of the video. Now there are a number of raid buff foods which will make you consistent gold throughout the expansion. Today we're going to focus on the main five, which will get the most consistent use. I say this because there are alternatives for the same stats in some cases, but they're far harder to farm in bulk, so purely from a time investment perspective, these are the ones I would recommend. Firstly we have Poached Bluefish, which is a recipe purchased from Yuriku in Telar, Nagrand. This gives 23 spell damage and 20 spirit, so is the go-to buff food for casters. These can be made with ice fin bluefish, which are caught from pores in Nagrand or from the open water around the zone. Grilled mudfish is a similar one, except this time giving 20 agility and spirit. Hunters, rogues and ferals will use this, and the recipe is also purchased from Yuriku in Telar. The main ingredient is Fig Gluster's mudfish, which is caught from pools in Nagrand and the common drops from the open water, much like the ice fin bluefish. Now our old friend Golden Fish Sticks, as mentioned previously, these are the go-to buff food for healers, so we're going to get a lot of use. They're widely fished in Terracar, so easy to reach on foot from Shatrath if you're yet to buy your flying mount. For strength users, we have Roasted Cleft Hoof, which is obtained from Yuriku and Talar again. These recipes use Cleft Hoof meat, which drops unsurprisingly from Cleft Hoof all around Nagrand. As this is the only strength food on offer, I expect we'll see this item selling well and for a decent amount of gold. Finally, we've got the Spicy Crawdad. This is purchased from Innkeeper Biribi in Illyrian Stronghold if you're Alliance, and Rungor in the Stonebreaker Hold if you're Horde. This is the best tank food in the game, offering 30 stamina, and as a result, it is one of the trickiest to get. The ingredients needed is Furious Crawdad, which drops only from Highland Mix Schools in three lakes in Terracar. These are also only reachable by flying mounts and have high level mobs patrolling in the area, so you'll need to have a decent amount of gear to fend these off. At the start of the expansion especially, these will sell for a lot of gold. And naturally, we're going to see spikes and dips in prices of these items. They're going to sell best at the start of a new raid tier, so if there's one coming out, you may want to stockpile a little to ensure you can sell at the best price possible. Another source of gold is the recipes that we get from the cooking daily quests. There are quite a few that you can get, but the ones we're going to look at for gold making purposes are Storm Chops, Kibler's Bits and Captain Rumsey's Larker. 
Storm Chops are unique in the fact that they give you a chance to fire off a lightning bolt at the enemy and can proc many times in a row. This is super useful for AoE farming classes such as Prop Paladins where they can not only do a little more damage but pull more aggro if farming with others. These are made with cleft hoof meat in Nagrand and lightning eels which can be fished from high level zones in Classic such as Eastern Plaguelands and outside of Karazhan. Kibler's Bits again is a really cool item because this is a buff food for your pet. Mostly used by hunters for obvious reasons, this is eaten by the player and the buff is applied to the pet. This will be in high demand for min-maxers looking to push out that extra bit of damage. And they're made from buzzard meat which drops from the buzzards in Hellfire Peninsula, a high concentration of which is found around Honor Hole. Lastly we have Captain Rumsey's Lager, which can be obtained from either the cooking dailies or the fishing dailies. It gives the player a buff adding plus 10 fishing skill for 3 minutes, and although it's a very niche item, it may have some demand so I wanted to include it in this list for that reason. We do have one other honourable mention, which is the Spalling Snack. This is sold by the Sporigar Quartermaster Micah, but isn't tied to any reputation level. Instead, you trade 2 glow cap for the recipe, which is in turn BOE. This means you can either sell it or use it yourself. You have the choice to do either. The Spalling Snack is another pet buff food for hunters and warlocks and provides 20 stamina and spirit. This is extremely powerful for SLSL locks and is also useful for hunters if they're looking to solo encounters. Now, although there are other recipes I haven't mentioned, I believe the ones I've talked about are the ones that are going to be the best to obtain. The reason I say this is because although some of the other foods may sell for more gold, players aren't going to spend more money for an item which gives them the same stats. So although you may achieve a higher gold per hour from farming these items, you're far less likely to sell them. As someone who has limited time to play per week, balancing work, family and life, I wanted to make sure that the gold farming I do is actually rewarded and I don't want to have to spend hours council scanning to make sales. Cooking is an integral part of the Warcraft experience and will be used thoroughly. There are some really fun things you can do with it and I'm glad Blizzard took the time to flesh the profession out in these early games as it's something that gets somewhat forgotten in retail WoW sadly. Before we finish, I wanted to take an opportunity to thank everyone for the tremendous support you've given me on my videos so far. I love making these guides and will continue to do so over the coming months and years. Now that is all for this video. If you found the information useful, please don't forget to drop me a like and feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. If there's any video requests you'd like to make, please feel free to drop me a comment below this video. With all that said, I'll see you guys in the next video and on the battlefield of the Outlands. Take care.